Okay, so this is the attendant... Attendant. God, I can't talk. Accused defendant. I put those two words together. See, I have a different problem from CJ. I literally combine words. When we're discussing the defendants and the accused, we're talking about their characterization just as they were when they were in the role of being a defendant or an accused. Nothing, we're not, we're, we're, we're not really talking about out, outside of that in so much as I can. Just there's gonna be some characters where I have difficulty like differentiating, but I'm trying to focus as much as I can on how they were in their role as accused slash defendant. Um, so how I like them as the accused and defendants. This isn't this won't this one won't take there very long because I I think this one's pretty straightforward. Um Phoenix is kind of adorable as a defendant. He's, he's like the younger kid that you're like, man, that's bad for him. He's just bad luck. Got sucked into Dahlia. Uh, he was a pretty good defendant. Maya's a really good defendant because you really feel for her. The, the issue with her and why she's not S is because it happens too goddamn much. Like, stop. Edgeworth is like the perfect sort of, I don't want you to defend me. Ah, but then you defend him and he's like, thank you for defending me. Perfect. That's the perfect sort of character development you want there. Kind of like Van Zeke's. Uh, Powers was good. Uh, you like seeing his soft side makes you feel for him. Uh, Larry's fucking obnoxious, but he's not the worst. So, I mean, he's C. Um, Lana was really goddamn annoying. You understand why she's trying to protect her sister from learning what happened. But holy shit, was she annoying. So, C. Love Larry, though. S tier Maggie because Maggie it's it's pretty much established why Maggie is a defendant more than once because she's the most unlucky person in the world um I it, Maggie being the defendant is like the best part of both of those cases because those cases are otherwise awful but they like salvage those cases from being completely trash because you're defending Maggie and you she's precious and you want her to be you know what? fuck it she's going there uh, so Max, I thought was pretty good. Uh, besides the creepy aspect of it, eh, people are going to have different opinions on that, I think. But, um, he was still good. His like, he, he was still really good. His like personality shift was also very interesting. And it didn't happen right away. It took a while for that to happen. Right. I think unless I'm wrong about that. Oh, when he gets... Oh, I see. Okay, so this Phoenix is when he... When he briefly gets accused of... Right, okay. I, I, that was actually... It made it made sense that they would do that, considering he was, you know, there and her partner and shit. He would be a suspect. But it was kind of boring. It's not as... An, not annoying, though, like these two. So we'll put him... We'll put him there. Um, on guard. Fantastic. Just the whole shift... His little play dumb act was amazing. Um, even though he ends up being a, you know, a villain, it, it was it was amazing. Ron Delight, also awesome. Um, he was precious. And you, you really felt for him. Him trying to lie because he knew something you didn't know ahead of time. Was, it was annoying, but at the same time, you're like, ah, okay. That was actually kind of clever. Probably not as good as that. Oh man, this is rough. So, this guy has a lot going on. He's obviously mentally impaired, but he's also a pedophile, but he also kills himself because that's how devoted to the girl who manipulated him was. This is the toughest place in the entire list you it's kind of astonishing how you can make somebody who did something so obviously wrong like you really feel you pity him you really really pity him so i think we'll split the difference and put him in b then because if dahlia 
the thing is, if Dahlia was 18, he'd be up here. He'd be up here. It's like super tragic, heart wrenching. But she was like 15 or something. So it still kind of leaves a uncomfortable feeling in your stomach. Giga Chad! Best defendant in the game. I mean, he basically is the attorney at the end of the game, at the end of that chapter. 14? Oh, even worse. Uh, Waki is the worst. God damn, this guy's annoying. His fucking fake ass gangster attitude was obnoxious. It wasn't funny. It was more offensive than funny. Um, he just was the worst person to talk to. Just the worst. Um, Maki was okay. He's kind of annoying too. The twist was kind of interesting. Eh, that case sucked. The thing about Waki though is he's not actually the worst. Well, you don't have to buzz, only you can answer this. Oh, right. <laughs> um, it's between two, but I'm gonna say Waki Kitaki. Waki Kitaki is indeed the go. answer. Spelled his name wrong, by the way. Again. Yeah, yeah. I, de <laughs> I definitely spelled his name wrong, but I was like, I should probably go back and check to see what the correct spelling is, but fuck him. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> He's the worst to talk to. But Zach Grammar is the worst. Not only does he just vanish on you, which you don't want a defendant vanishing on you, or a client vanishing on you. He vanishes on you and then leaves his daughter in your care. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That, and that's why he's not down here. Because you understand that the only reason he feels the way he does is because Dahlia is just this master fucking evil manipulator. For sure. I 100% agree. Uh, Vera? Vera was cute. I like that she talked to you a lot through her drawings. And the drawings were really cute. Um, probably here. K. Okay. Precious K. <sighs> Precious... Lost her memory K was my heart felt like clenched every time she talked and like would lose herself. Like, oh, no, no, fantastic, great way to do that. The great way they're able to take a character that was established but make their perspective as being a an accused fresh, whereas they haven't been able to do that with Maya. They were able to do that with K instead of it being like exactly what you thought it would be. It turned out to be an entirely different experience. Amazing. That's actually a good point. I guess I do have to consider 152, in which she was good, but not as good. Ah, she's still probably up here. The reinvention of, of her character as a as an accused was amazing. So you did it. They, they did exactly what the problem was with Maya. They avoided that. When was Gumshoe accused? I honestly don't remember. So it wasn't really memorable. I know what cases you guys are talking about right now. Um, but there isn't, he wasn't really a memorable, purely as a defendant. He wasn't really super memorable. He also wasn't bad either, though, and it is Gumshoe, so that keeps him higher. I just don't, I don't really remember much about it. But again, it's Gumshoe, so anytime he's on the screen, it's delightful, so it's not low tier. Uh, what's her face? She was fine. Hair was awful, but I mean, in general, she was fine. I didn't think there was anything especially memorable about her besides her really, really, really poorly made, uh... Uh, suitcase. Oh, she was accused? That's right. She didn't end up being, like, the killer or whatever, but she was accused. I actually thought she was adorable. Like, her mannerisms and stuff. Sucks what happened to her. But I thought she was pretty good. I, I found her to be entertaining. Francisca? That was in Investigations as well, wasn't it? Because it wasn't 3-3. Or 3-5, I mean. That case... I won five. I mean, 
her thing is that she was good because she kind of just held her own, right? Like, she don't need nobody defending her. Um, so she was kind of sick in that way. But she also wasn't one for very long. So, like, here. I do, re I do remember that now. I just, I fucking hate that case. It's not even just, a, it's not even really a terrible case overall. I just don't care for it. Courtney being accused was really interesting. Um, because she did not have the same type of resolve that Francis Francisca did, which was mildly surprising. Uh, and that kind of, that made her a really interesting defendant. Um, maybe just under Francisca then. Oh, Nicole, I loved Nicole Swift. This is, this is my, uh, Venus of the investigation games. Not around for very long, but I loved everything about her. Um, so she's probably higher than she deserves to be, but I absolutely loved her energy. She was Lada, except not annoying to me. She's actually like spicy without being obnoxious. Oh, I think, uh, well, I've always ranked Swift higher than uh, Cammy Meal. Uh, Simon was great. Very similar to Unguard, except he was deeper as a character. I think we're putting him here. He was fantastic. He was awesome. That whole, like you get the, you get the first one. And now again, full disclosure, me making him Tommy was so in the first part probably amplified him a little bit to me. Cause I thought that was amusing. I amused myself there. Um, but then the, even what happens later was really, really good. Masters. Oh man. You feel for masters. Masters was such a good dude. His hair fucking just turns white. The The problem with Masters is that um, all he has is kind of the downtrodden, oh, I'm so sorry. My name is Masters and I never did anything wrong, but I'm going to be here and be a good person anyways. Whereas like every one of these other people on here are very dynamic, except arguably Maggie, but even Maggie like, has shifts in how she's like approaching, like how she's reacting at the time. But yeah, he's still high tier, just a little below like the more dynamic characters. Um, fuck, what's her name? Masters, like little sister slash daughter surrogate. Um, she was great. I loved her character a lot. I honestly thought she did it for a while, and she did do something. She did do something. It's not as horrible as I thought it was. Catherine Hall. Uh, I actually think that makes her a little more dynamic than Masters. So we're going to put her here. I really enjoyed her because, like, I thought she did it. Like, mm. Mm. Ryu's an interesting defendant because you defend yourself. Which attorneys have very much a similar, um, very much a similar uh, saying that doctors do the... The person who operates on himself has a fool for a doctor. The person who defends themselves is a fool of an attorney. Um, but obviously it works out a little different here. It's Cosmo with you too. I liked the introduction, even if I didn't like the case all that much. Um, the introduction to his character was really good. So, well, I'll say like here. I'm not sure it's as good as the Edgeworth, defending Edgeworth. Or even Van Zeeks, who I think is like similar to Edgeworth. Van Zeeks was, a, was the, the only thing I can say bad about him being a defendant is that it was almost too much like Edgeworth, but it was done just differently enough that it was a great experience. The Gilded, oh my God. Ah, I fucking love the McGilded case is everything that's true, but you also hate about being an attorney. And so even though I should despise that, I love the fact that the game actually gave you a taste of that. He's awful. It's awful. But as far as you know, he didn't do it. So you had to defend him. That's just the way it is. That's, that's our ethical dilemma.
It's not even, it shouldn't be a dilemma. That's just what we have to do. He was just, he was, he was very, um, he was, he was very interesting in that you knew he was kind of shady, but you still weren't sure if he actually did it because he had enough plausible deniability, loved his design. The interactions with him I thought were really good. You get to see like his very calm and charismatic side, but also his like infuriated side. Gina was also precious uh, as a defendant. Uh, I guess she technically got accused twice, right? Um, I wanted nothing more than to make sure that Gina got off scot-free. Or as much scot-free as possible. When all that happened. Just, you wanted to defend her and have her life get better. But she was just so... And she gets all sad and you're just like, man. Iris comes to her defense soon and you're like, man. Everything about that makes the... the she is like the def the perfect defendant that you want. That you feel like you want to stop at nothing to make sure she's acquitted where he's great because he is simply a defendant you might be likely to get at some point. Soseki, bad. Annoying, just absolutely fucking annoying. He was, again, he was fine initially. I was fine with him for like the first half of the first case he's in. And after that, he's just god awful. He He's not entertaining. He's not funny. He just... I cringe when I look at him. Much better as a witness. Much better as a witness. Even a shaky witness, he's better than shaky defendant. Ray, I loved. I loved Ray. Um, here. Her friendship with Susato was was great. It made her really entertaining. Um, you could tell she had her own brand of spunk to her, which I wasn't expecting at first. I thought she'd be very demure like stereotypical Japanese woman of that time, but she wasn't. I, I, I thought she was, I loved her energy. Hairbrain, also loved Hairbrain. Uh, I based his, like he reminded me a lot of a early English Maurice Moss. I, I loved his design. He, his interactions with Barrack were really funny and it, it added a lot of intrigue to his character and his depth to both of their characters, which was great. Uh, you felt really sorry for the guy because he was willing to go down just so that he could protect his legacy, which was like, could, like it, that's that's crazy to most people. But to other people, their legacy is more important to them than their life. Uh, but then you, you're, you're the emotion you feel when you when he when he gets off, you're really happy for him. He's really happy. He just has a good energy to him. Um, even when he's like on the other side of it where he's like, just make me guilty. So yeah, that's uh, defendants and the accused.